All right, let's talk about what's the deal with the base two trick. So here's what I wanna do. I wanna show you a trick that you are going to see on the internet a lot, and then we're gonna dissect and see why does it actually work. So the first thing I want you to think about is if we had 13 base 10 and we're trying to convert it to base two. Here's what the base two trick says. You take your number and you divide it. So I'm dividing this by two. And I see that two goes into 13 six times. So six times two is 12. I'm going to write a remainder of one. And I know that it goes in six times. Now I go to the next step. I'm going to do it again. So now I am dividing six by two. I know that two goes into six three times and I have zero remainder. Now I'm gonna say three divided by two. Well, I know it goes in one time and I know that I have, uh, or it goes in one time and I know that I have a remainder of one. Now I can think of this one as just kind of staying over here by its lonesome self. And how I get my answer is, on the trick it tells you to reverse the order. So I'm gonna write one, one, zero, one, base two. This trick is great and all. There's only one problem. One, most of the time people have absolutely no clue why it works. So I'm going to rip it apart and show you why this actually works. Keep in mind that if you make any mistakes along the process here, in other words, you forget to reverse the order of your remainders, um, things like that, it suddenly will completely mess up your whole problem, which is why it's important to understand the conceptual ideas behind this. Let's start by going into the concrete and doing some drawings. You can see that I have got 13 X's here on the board. So remember, the first thing we did was we divided by two. So what we're gonna do is we are going to divide this into groups of two. So let me do that. I'm gonna use different colors each time so that you can see what we're doing. As we go through this, I also want you to reflect on the place value chart because this is gonna help our conceptual understanding as well. You can see right away that when I took my 13 and I broke it into groups of two, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, six groups of two, and one left over. Think back to the trick I just showed you. That's exactly what I got the first time, right? I got six and I had one left over. This one left over is literally accounting for this two to the power of zero or this one, right? So when I think about all of these being able to be in a group of some sort, I still have this lonely guy that's going to get left out. Now I want you to think about my six groups of two. We're gonna forget this guy for a moment now. He's already been accounted for down here. And I'm gonna take a different color and I'm gonna group them into groups of two again. Now when I say groups of two, remember there's only six groups, right? One, two, three, four, five, six. So I'm gonna group those six groups into groups of two, which is really gonna be groups of four X's. Let me show you what I mean. Now you can see that I was able to group that into one, two, three groups. Notice that I have absolutely nothing left over. I have absolutely no remainders because again, I have already accounted for this guy right here, right? So I have no remainders right now, so I'm going to write a zero. Now, I'm gonna grab a different color, and this time I'm going to, again, see if I can get groups of two. Now remember, I'm only dealing with one, two, three. So I'm trying to see how many groups of two I can make out of these three groups, so I know I can just make one, right? So let me circle that. I was able to make the one group of the two here. What do I have left over? So I still have this one group left over. What's really crazy about this though, is this one group is really a group of what? What's two squared? Four, right? Is this a group of four? It is. So now I only have one left. Do I have anything I can still make groups of two out of? No, because remember I only have one here, right? So ironically, how many X's are in this? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 
what's two cubed? It would be eight as well, right? So I have one group of eight, one group of four, zero groups of two, and one group of two to the power of zero, which is one. When you are operating in a different base, and by the way, you could use this trick, uh, the base two trick for any base. It literally works with anything. If you don't understand what you're doing though, it's a problem. So um, what I want you to do is I want you to think conceptually for these base problems. You need to be able to explain the math of why the trick works. In my personal opinion, I find it easier just to start with my X's and say, what's the largest amount that I can group them? Can I make a group of eight? Oh yeah, I can make a group of eight. So really the trick is going from uh, the furthermost right to the left. The way that I like to think about it is going from left to right. You can do it actually though either way. For the problems in your homework, we don't want to see the trick. We want you to show us the conceptual understanding. However, I do want you to know what you run into it on the internet and I want you to be able to understand the math behind it. Hopefully now you know what's the deal with the base two trick you keep seeing online.